Another Fox News alert, an urgent message today from former Vice President Dick Cheney to House Republicans who are raising questions about the terror attack in Benghazi and its aftermath in the wake of yesterday's hearing. That message, be prepared to subpoena the former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton in this matter. This comes after a charged hearing on the Hill yesterday during which three veteran diplomats gave their own detailed moment-by-moment -moment accounts of what happened on the night of September 11, 2012, when our consulate was attacked and four Americans died, including our ambassador, and the aftermath of those attacks. Gregory Hicks was the deputy chief of mission at the embassy in Tripoli. He was the number two guy in Libya for us at the time. And he became the highest ranking U.S. official in Libya after our ambassador, Chris Stevens, was murdered, assassinated that night. At one point, uh, he told lawmakers that he received a phone call following the attack that night from Secretary Clinton, 2 a.m. But the subject of what led to the attack didn't come up. Listen. Mr. Hicks, <laughs> 2 in the morning, Secretary of State calls you personally. Not a common call. No, sir. Did she ask you about the cause of the attack? Did she ask, ask about videos? Did she ask about anything at all that would have allowed you to answer the question of how Benghazi came to be attacked as far as you knew? I don't recall that being part of the conversation. So she wasn't interested in the cause of the attack, and this was the only time you talked directly to the secretary where you could have told her or not told her about the cause of the attack? It was the, yes, that was the only time when I could have. Chris Steyerwalt is our Fox News digital politics editor and host of Power Play on foxnews.com live. So let's just start with the vice president, uh, the former vice president going on Capitol Hill and saying, subpoena her, get ready to subpoena her. Now she's already testified on Capitol Hill, but we found out this week she never spoke to the ARB. That's the, the review board she handpicked to review her own department's handling of this situation, the State Department's, and not surprisingly, uh, they largely gave her a clean bill of health, but they never talked to her. And now Vice President Cheney is saying, in the wake of what we heard yesterday from Mr. Hicks and others, they need to have another crack at Mrs. Clinton. She's not likely to come voluntarily, so subpoena her. Likely to happen? Uh, I'd say so. Uh, certainly a lot more likely after what we heard yesterday. We heard Senator Tom Coburn, the Republican from Oklahoma, also say he had some serious concerns about discrepancies in the testimony and that he might like to hear from Secretary Clinton again himself. So the, the ball is moving forward as it relates to Hillary Clinton, what she said, what her credibility is as it relates to her previous testimony uh, in light of what Mr. Hicks said and in light of what all of the witnesses said. As I see it, since the Benghazi attack happened, this has been the roughest week for Mrs. Clinton uh, and, you know, her handling of it. First, Steve Hayes in the Weekly Standard reporting how intricately involved the State Department was in citing their leadership's very serious concerns about the CIA's talking points on this that, that, that told the truth, that said it was al-Qaeda, Ansar al-Sharia, that this is a terrorist attack, all scrubbed because of the concerns at State Department among the leadership. Uh, so that came out, and then you have Mr. Hicks talking about how she called him. She didn't care what was, she didn't, apparently didn't want to hear uh, what led to those attacks. And, uh, you know, all of this comes out at the time that we know Hillary Clinton stood in front of those caskets when they came back yeah. home and talked about this awful internet video, which she knew, which she knew we now know was not the cause of that attack and really had nothing to do with it. Yeah, the standing in front of the remains of those Americans killed in the attack uh, was a, a, a big moment at the time. And Clinton was pushing back against uh, already growing criticism from Republicans about that. And basically she was saying, she referenced this video. She talked about the tyranny of the mob. She talked about those things, as you say, even when she knew what uh, much more different about uh, the nature of these attacks than she let on at that moment. So that's a big deal. And then the next big deal, of course, is when she said at this point, what difference does it make? She said it. She's screaming it uh, at Senate, Senate Republicans questioning her about that. And as time goes by, remember, every day takes us closer to the day that she likely announces her candidacy for presidency. Uh, and as time goes by, 
her role in this and her credibility as a person who is strong on foreign policy and uh, all the work that she did to rehabilitate mm -hmm. her family's image as it relates to veracity uh, and dealing with inquests and cover-ups and things but like that uh, loses ground. What we learned here is when she said to, co to Congress in January, what difference does it make at this point, you know, what led to the attacks? Uh, what we're now learning is it wasn't just at that point she felt it was irrelevant. She always felt it was irrelevant. I mean, the night of the attacks, as she's talking to the now number one, number, number one man in, in Libya, she's not asking anything about what led to this. I mean, at no point did she seem interested in what led to the terrorist attack. I want to ask you whether this will come back to haunt her quickly, because when she ran against Barack Obama, who could forget this portion of her now infamous ad? It's 3 a.m. and your children are safe and asleep. But there's a phone in the White House and it's ringing. Something's happening in the world. Your vote will decide who answers that call. And now? She did. Uh, well, she got the call at 2 a.m. or she made the call at 2 a.m., not 3. And according to Mr. Hicks, she did not call for action. She said, tell us what happened. She didn't say act, act, act. She said, wait, wait, wait. And Hicks said that her top deputy is the one who was very upset with him for talking to congressional investigators about the events and that soon thereafter he got demoted. A lot of questions still. Chris, thank you. You bet.